Water is the lifeblood of human beings and all life on Earth. Aquatic ecosystems purify polluted water, shield coastlines, control erosion, and store carbon. People depend on clean water for drinking, cooking, cleaning, sanitation, growing food, fishing, and recreation. And yet over 2 billion people lack access to safely managed drinking water. Over 4 billion people lack access to safely managed sanitation. And three quarters of all the natural disasters in the past 20 years were water related, including floods, landslides, and other extreme weather events. 80% of wastewater is discharged into the environment untreated, contaminating surface water, groundwater, and the oceans. Waterborne disease causes nearly 2 million preventable deaths worldwide annually, with the greatest burden falling on children under five years of age. Wildlife populations that depend on freshwater habitats have crashed by an average of 80% since 1970. Water pollution, water scarcity, water-related disasters, and damage to healthy freshwater ecosystems have major impacts on a wide range of human rights, including the rights to life, health, water, food, an adequate standard of living, development, culture, and the rights of the child. These impacts fall disproportionately upon those who are vulnerable or marginalized because of their age, gender, poverty, indigenous status, disabilities, and cultural or ethnic backgrounds. Although at risk, these communities have the potential to contribute to water solutions when empowered to do so. I would like to emphasize that safe, sufficient water and healthy aquatic ecosystems are substantive elements of the right to a healthy environment, as recognized by regional tribunals, national laws, and national jurisprudence. States should apply a rights-based approach in all aspects of allocating, managing, conserving, protecting, and restoring water. My report outlines seven key steps that states should take to fulfill their human rights obligations. First, prepare a state of the water assessment, including information on water quality, sources of pollution, the water supply, water users, and impacts on human rights, human health, and ecosystem health. Second, Conduct a legal mapping initiative to ensure that human rights are incorporated in water and wastewater laws, regulations, and policies, and ensure that human rights are prioritized in water allocation decisions. Third, develop or revise water-related plans to incorporate the rights-based approach. Fourth, implement and enforce water-related plans and laws, regulations, and standards. And fifth, evaluate progress and, where necessary, strengthen actions to ensure that human rights are fulfilled. Two additional actions that must be taken at every step of the process are building human, financial, and institutional capacity and informing and engaging the public, particularly women, youth, and other vulnerable and marginalized groups. Businesses are a major contributor to water pollution, water overuse, and the degradation of freshwater ecosystems. So they must do much more to respect human rights by reducing pollution, using water more efficiently, and avoiding activities that damage aquatic ecosystems. Sadly, people continue to be murdered, criminalized, and intimidated because of their courageous efforts to protect the environment and human rights. Individuals working to protect clean water are among the victims. States must do more to protect environmental human rights defenders. Water pollution, water scarcity, and water-related disasters are preventable problems. We know the solutions. A human rights perspective can serve as a catalyst for accelerated action to achieve safe and sufficient water, empower those working to protect and conserve water, and guide our actions towards a healthy and sustainable future.